Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone out there. Happy Thursday. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host for today, Quabila Hardin, along with Ms. Micah Simone Roll. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And my very special guest. Very special. <laughs> Reverend Dr. or Dr. Reverend Greg Ota. He is here representing, well, He's not doing Bible study today. Today we're gonna today we're gonna be (laughs) today we're gonna be talking about the new life empowerment development centers. Development centers incorporated. I'm sorry. I need to train you off 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 air on the name. (laughs) Yes, sir. Okay. How about N L E D C simpler? N L E D C. Yeah. All right. Okay. And so today we're gonna do some updates on what's going on with the computer lab and talk about some summer programs and how thing you know, how the kids reacting to what you have to offer and then other partnerships that you have made okay go ahead okay (laughs) well first of all our hours have changed we usually during the school year we open from 4 p.m to about 6 p.m just a few hours in the evening so the kids could come over there and do homework okay now that it's summertime they're out of school they have no place to go in the morning, so we open at 9 in the morning. 9, okay. And we close at 1 p.m. 1 p.m., okay. So and what we try to do is, we have, last year, we had a program, a computer program that we ran through for nine weeks. Mm-hmm. And it taught the kids keyboarding, basic Word, basic Excel, basic micro, Microsoft PowerPoint. Okay. And that's what we did. A lot of the kids went back to school with better skills on keyboarding. I bet they did. So that, yeah, they were. Well, we have a uh, September conference in the ministry side. One of the kids actually presented his PowerPoint. He's 10 years old. He's 11 now. He presented his PowerPoint at that conference. So at the, at the level that the kids leave us, they live with more skill and computer science okay. that they did when we get them. Now, this summer, what we're doing, we open at nine. As a matter of fact, before we get there at nine, there are kids outside the door. That's wonderful. We try to feed them, but we're looking for volunteers to donate food to, to us okay. for breakfast and lunch. Right now, sometimes it comes out of our pocket and it comes out of our ministry budget just to feed the kids. A lot of kids that come there didn't eat at home. Yeah, Nobody's at home, so they come hungry. But with the summer program, mm-hmm. they are doing breakfast and lunch, so I wonder if there's a way you could partner with them for them to maybe deliver a certain amount of meals or have you pick up a certain amount of meals. For we them. we did that l- last year. I guess I didn't start in time. Okay. Yeah, I didn't start in time looking for someone who has a summer program to feed these kids. Last year, Family Ties did a great job. Okay. They brought us breakfast in the morning. That's wonderful. And they brought us lunch in the afternoon. Okay. So we didn't have to worry about food. All we had to do was worry about teaching the kids. Okay. But she's not on right now. Family Ties is not on right now. Okay. They didn't get the approval to get started. If they get started, all those feeding problems will go away. Well, in the meantime, we're reaching out to you, the community of Jonesboro. Please find it in your heart to volunteer, or donate some meals, Yes. breakfast, or lunch. And for sale lunch. There's a lot of restaurants that throw food away after 11. Yes. We could use this food. Okay. There are kids in that neighborhood who can eat them. All right. So. And we'll pick them up too. Okay. So <laughs> we'll please reach. Up. And we'll make sure to get you the contact information for the computer lab so that mm-hmm. you can reach out to Reverend Ota and, you know, find out when I can give him the number right now. Okay. They're listening. 933. 933. 6462. 6462. That's the direct line to the lab. Someone will always answer it. Okay. So, a donation of any, are you taking any other types of donations? We'll take clothes, shoes, anything you have. Okay. That you're not using, somebody could use it in our neighborhood. Oh, that's okay. And for those that are not within the city of Jonesboro, could you also give the area code? The area code is 870. Okay. 
933-6462. Now, that's directly into the lab. Now, the development center has what we call a virtual number. A virtual. A virtual number. When you call that number, it will not only ring at the lab, it will ring on my cell phone as well. If nobody's at the lab, we could pick it up outside the lab. And that number is 870-277-1799. That number again is 870-277-1799. Okay, so there are multiple ways that you can reach Reverend yes. Oates for someone that works at the computer lab to yes. make any type of donation. Any kind of donations. And if you can't come to us, we'll come get it from you. All right. And we'll make sure to post this information under the video um, and on our Facebook page. And yes. There's all kind of ways you can find this information. Right. Um, <laughs> there, there's also a Facebook page for the New Life. Yes, there is a Facebook page. It's NLEDC. And uh, uh, Facebook, I'm looking for help for somebody to keep it updated for me. I'm the executive director, I'm the founder, I'm the teacher, I'm the learner, I'm all that stuff. So I need some help too. So he needs someone <laughs> to help him. I need someone to, I have an administrative assistant. Okay. Yeah, but she can't do all these things okay. either. We have kids in front of us all the time, I leave her to manage them. So managing the Facebook and all this media, we need help also. Okay, so this would be a great opportunity for, I say, this younger generation, yes. someone who loves to be on social media all yep. the time. Yep, they could do that. They could eat that up and free me up to do other stuff. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so reach out to Reverend Ota if you are interested in, you know, being an admin on his Facebook page, on the yes. Facebook page for the center. Yes. All right, so let's talk, let's talk about some of the programs that you're offering now. Are you still doing... Um, the lineup that you did for the fall no okay what we we modified that a little bit because it's mainly kids that mm -hmm. are there the churches like um miller's temple okay they've partnered with us they started this week they teach computer classes mondays and wednesdays in the morning they start at 10 i don't know what time they end the pastor there is our uh, uh, reverend conley glenn conley and I think it's Sylvia Johnson that administers this. We take the computers to them in the morning on Monday. They teach Monday and Wednesday and they bring it back. Okay. The reason we bring it back is to make sure everything is working properly. If they're having problems, we we'll get it fixed before the next class. Okay. Now, they are the ones doing the fall program. Okay. The 12-week program teach people everything okay. that we did in fall. Okay. In the lab, we're doing it a little differently because okay. it's mainly, it's mainly kids, kids, not adults. Okay. So what we do, we let them play some games. Okay. We let them play some educational games. We let them go back to either keyboarding or basic word or something similar. But we don't keep them studying all the time. That's what they did all semester long. Okay. It's summertime. So you teach them something, you let them off to play a little bit, you let them learn you let them play a little bit and you send them home okay now during the course of the different lessons that you have to offer mm -hmm. do you teach them how to research on the internet um how to look for valid sites of in that provide information right even the chief of police rick elliott has volunteered uh he, he says he has two police officers who will come in and teach us internet safety okay so towards the end of the summer i'm going to call on him I meant to stay here and talk to him yesterday okay. to get a schedule. I need him to teach that. They okay. know more than we do. Yes, sir. Right. Because they, they deal with the problem side. We don't. And so they, actually, they know what to teach the kids. We're actually going to have them come back and talk about some of that internet. Okay. Um, all the cyber stuff that they deal with. And try okay. to help people become more aware. And with children, they're a lot smart intelligent than mm -hmm. we give them credit for. They do. Even say at two and three years old, they know how to turn on a device, they know mm -hmm. how to find a game, they know mm -hmm. how to go to YouTube yep, they and do. find what they need. So. My two-year-old does that effortlessly. Oh. It don't matter what you give her, she'll go find a YouTube and click it and she'll go find the video she wants and click. She's not even two yet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we definitely need to put some protection measures in place. Yes, and we need to children. know how to do that as a lab. Okay. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> so, now, and another thing I was thinking about before the interview started, the skills that you're teaching these young children, mm -hmm. 
like you said, it's going to carry with them throughout their school career and no matter where else they go in life, right. they're going to be better prepared to say, type papers when they get to high school. Mm -hmm. They'll know how to navigate the computer typewriter, whatever system mm -hmm. they use. Mm -hmm. Nobody uses typewriter anymore. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, they'll be better able to navigate those different devices. Right. Um, they'll be less frustrated because they know how to open a Word document, mm -hmm. how to uh, set up the page, how to set the justification, mm -hmm. and what font is best to use, and double, you know, all those different things that go along with right. whatever that teacher requires. Right. Me, I'm still learning. Don't fuss. Excel is my nemesis, but it's okay. necessary. I have to learn. I'm going to have to learn Excel. Before. I'm a sociologist, and research is part of my what I'm my studies. Mm -hmm. And Excel helps with research, and okay. I'm gonna have to learn it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you a quick crash course. Okay. On the air. In Excel, Excel is not like PowerPoint, and it's not like Word. Mm -hmm. Excel has cells. Okay. Okay. Cell is a unit, and each unit has an address. Excel doesn't necessarily it uses numbers. But he uses formulas more than he uses numbers. Okay. Okay. So in Excel, for every address, if there's a value in it, it doesn't care what the value is. It cares about the address. Okay. <laughs> Track with me. I'll try. The first square, the first rectangle on the very top of an Excel spreadsheet is A1. Okay. That's the address. Okay. So if I put the number 20 in A1, Listen carefully. Okay. And I put another value in C3. Okay. Okay, so I put 40 in C3 and 20 in A1. And I write a formula. I don't even have to think that hard. I say equals A1 plus C3. Equals whatever. I'm done. Okay. If I change the value in A1, my answer changes. I don't have to think. Okay. It doesn't matter what numbers I use. I just need to tell you what address to go look okay. and do the calculation. Okay. Was that simple enough for yes, you? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it, the formulas get more complicated, but that's the simplest formula for Excel. Okay. I want to take this value, whatever value is in this address, take this one away from this value and I'll give you an answer. As long as I change these numbers, the answer is correct. Okay. If I write the formula correct. And sometimes you don't even have to write it. You just have to click, click, and, and you're done. Okay. Alrighty. People so. are intimidated by it. But it's, it's, it's a simpler, read to me, it's a simpler software to learn than Word, a micro PowerPoint. Really? Yes. Oh, well. The Word has more rules than you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess because I'm so used to typing documents, right. and basic letters, um, right. email attachments, and okay. Let me things. ask you a question then. <laughs> okay, in the word document that you typed, okay, and you found out that you used the word, and it's all through your document. Do you know how to go change all of them at the same time? Yes. Do you? What woman change all the words? All the words at the same time, one stroke. All the words. Like, let's say you put Quibilla, mm -hmm. and it should have been Greg. And Quibilla occurs 16 times in your document. You want to change all the places where Quibilla is to Greg. You what have to you? go to find and replace. There you go. Type you know a lot of people don't know that? Well, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. So a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, that's, you know, we learned that um, Lagans and I have been working on a document, and so mm -hmm. we need to change some things. Okay. And so... We're, we're learning okay. some other things as we go along. That's harder than doing it in Excel. Really? Yes. Okay. I'm going to have to take <laughs> you up on that challenge one yes. day. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a lot simpler. Excel is more clicking than anything else. Okay. You just have to know the basic rules. Okay. okay. I'll give you an example. The same thing you just told me about Word. In Excel, if there's a value that I need to change, and I need it to change all through the document. Okay. This document, that document, that document. There's a way I can link them. Every time I change this value, it changes in all the documents. <laughs> wow. Well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Do you need me to take over? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, you tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with Reverend Dr. Greg Ota from the New Life and Development Empowerment um, New Life Empowerment Development Center, Incorporated, <laughs> which is here in Jonesboro, and the office is located in 601 Marshall 60, Street. I always get that address. I don't know why I thought 603. 601. 601 Marshall, Marshall Street, right. which is um, perpendicular or runs is off of Bell Street. It's right off of Bell Street. Right off of Bell Street. So, okay. So let's get into some other things. You're teaching them keyboarding. You're teaching mm -hmm. them some basic programs, mm -hmm. and then they're learning. Through the games that they're playing, mm -hmm. what they think they're playing, what are some things they're learning through the games? Okay, I'm glad you asked that question. There's a, a game we call Nitro Type. Nitro? Nitro Type. It is tied into keyboarding as well. But the beauty of it is here. <laughs> the beauty of it is uh, you get on this game, you pick your car, there's a start line. And the words will appear on the bottom of the screen. The more accurately you type it and the faster you type it, the faster your car goes. Mm. And you can compete with other people in the lab. Okay. So the more accurately you type, the faster you type, the faster your car goes. So if you type anything wrong, your car stops until okay. you get it right. So yeah. you're in the game. In the heat of the game, they learn to type faster and more accurately. So we let them play that for a while. So it's getting their finger, their mind and fingers, making a connection to where the keys are located right. on the board. Right. So do you teach them how to properly hold their... There's a, there's a program online that they get on, we put them on. Okay. It's called e-learning for kids. It's e free. It's on the internet. Okay. You put them on there and it gives you categories and age brackets that the kids can get on. Okay. So you put them on, there's advanced keyboarding, there's beginning keyboarding. So depending on the age of the kids, we'll put them on one of those. And at some point, they want to play Nitro type. You put them on it. That actually tests their skills. Okay. And it actually helps them improve their skills. I wish things like this were more available when I was in school. Mm -hmm. I didn't take keyboarding until like 10th or 11th grade. I still haven't taken it either. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was... Well, I would consider myself behind the mm -hmm. curve. I am too. Um, and at that time, we had the typewriters. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't the typewriter with this, you know, ding. Mm -hmm. But it was the typewriter. It had like a little display screen. Okay, that's a what processor. Okay, yeah. but it wasn't very big, though. It was just enough to show you maybe a line. what line you were typing at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But it was still that old fact, almost an old fashioned raised mm -hmm. key mm -hmm. typewriter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Something that you did not want to carry around because it was so heavy. So heavy right. <laughs> so, okay. Do you have any of those? Or do you ever expose the children to some of the older models? No, we have no access to okay. it. I won't even know where to buy one if I okay. want one. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you give them printouts maybe to take home of the keyboard so they can practice? Mm. Kind of getting familiar Don't with Don't forget them. where we are. And the computer lab. The kids don't have computers at home. That's right. Yeah. Well, maybe, okay, give them a printout of the keyboard mm -hmm. so they can practice, like, just on the paper at home mm -hmm. and then when they come back to the lab. Mm -hmm. Do you ever tell, okay. <laughs> we don't. We don't do that because if you give them anything to take home to study, when you come out in the front lawn, it's there. It doesn't make oh, it okay. home. So it's a waste of paper. So, so you teach them what you can while you have them. Okay. You put on, put in them as much as you can while you have them, but you can't make it seem like a classroom. Okay. Otherwise, they will stop coming because right. it's voluntary. Okay. You gotta let them play the Robux that they like to play. Then you make them go into Nitro Type or some other educational game. You gotta let them off. Okay. You gotta let them. If you don't let them off, they won't come back. Okay. It defeats the purpose of having the lab. So what is the age? What are the age ranges? Of we it? have from five years old. Up to 16. Up to 16. Yeah. So who seems to be the most excited to learn? The younger ones. The younger they, ones. Between <laughs> the ages of 8 and 11, they are most obedient. They follow instructions. Really? They, yes. <laughs> Actually, we took a test. We gave a test at Family Ties just last semester. We gave the kids from 5 to 16 or 13. 10 questions about the computers. Okay. The younger grades did better than the older grades. Hmm. 
surprise me too. So, so the the eight year olds can tell you what a mouse is and what it does and all that. The twelve year old is struggling. Okay, we're gonna get into we're gonna get ready to take a break here, okay. and we'll get into some of those results and maybe the why you feel that there's a big difference in the testing and the scoring. And okay. I'm, I'm interested to hear kind of you know your take on what okay. it is. So you're okay. tuned into Community Conversations on KLAK 102.5 FM. The phone lines are open at 870-277-1080. If you have questions for Dr. Ota, um, any questions concerning the computer um, lessons he teaches the computer lab, please give us a call. We're also streaming live on Facebook, and so leave us a message, and we'll be right back after these announcements. Listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Thinking about calling it quits in your marriage? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Before you take the first step down that painful path, here are three truths to consider. First, remember your vows. You promise to have and to hold your spouse from this day forward for better or for worse. This commitment was meant to be for a lifetime. Second, remember what marriage is. It's not a conditional contract, but an unconditional covenant of love. The difference? A contract is all about what you get, but a covenant is all about what you give. Third, remember the purpose of marriage. Marriage isn't just about happiness, but about holiness. A holy union established by God and for God. Remember, your family first. Want to learn more about today's topic? Download my podcast at markmerrill.com. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair, brake service, tires, oil changes, and more. Performed by ASE Certified Mechanics. The all-new Starks Auto Service, 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests. A large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, epiccenterjonesboro.com, and at 870-530-5841. When a woman gives her all to a boyfriend, she is hopeful about the future. Marriage was in her future plans until she received some shocking news. Now with her dream shattered and life altered, she has to pick up the pieces and move forward. It was in this experience that she realized that love has no protection. KLEK 102.5 and Massey Production presents the inspirational gospel stage play, Love Has No Protection, a story that would inspire you, renew, and reaffirm your faith. Featuring performers from all over Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana, 7 p.m. Saturday, June 24th at the Arkansas State University Student Union. Tickets are $10 in advance, $15 at the door. They can be purchased at KLEK Cool Cuts and online at www.klekfm.org or by calling 870-277-1080. Bring the entire family Saturday, June 24th to the Arkansas State University Student Union to see Love Has no protection the inspirational gospel stage play 7 p.m this event is a klek fundraiser just added a special three o'clock p.m matinee show that's right now it's going to be two shows three o'clock p.m and seven o'clock p.m the hit gospel stage play love has no protection coming to the asu student union centennial hall june 24th 
Don't miss it. KLEK is starting a new fundraiser which will allow listeners to donate to KLEK while buying groceries. KLEK is a part of the Kroger Community Rewards fundraising program. When shoppers visit a participating Kroger and scan his or her Kroger Plus shoppers card, a portion of the savings goes back to KLEK to help keep it on the air. Details on how to sign up for the program are available at KrogerCommunityRewards.com and at KLEKFM.org. This is a K. KLEK fundraiser. And now back to community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kabila Hardin, with Ms. Micah Simone Rowe and our special guest, Dr. Reverend Greg Ota. Mm-hmm. He is here from the New Life, <laughs> New, New Life Empowerment. I'm sorry. <laughs> New Life Empowerment Development Centers Incorporated. Um, he runs a computer lab on Marshall Street, which is at 601, mm-hmm. 601 Marshall Street, um, which is off of Belt Street. Um, the program that he's running this summer, they're open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is Monday through Friday. Yep. Okay, Monday through Friday from 9 to 1. And right now they're looking for volunteers to help with feeding the children breakfast mm-hmm. and or lunch mm-hmm. um you know some of them we don't know what their household what their we don't know the, the, the dynamics of their household is like and so getting a meal at mm-hmm. the center may be one of the best meals they've had yes. we want them to be engaged in learning and want to enjoy and get the most out of the program so right. they need that fuel for their brains they do as well mm-hmm. so if you would like to volunteer uh, or make a donation please call 870-933-6462. That's correct. Or 870-277-1799. That is a virtual number that will... Ring in two places at the same time. So somebody will always answer that. Okay. Yes. I'm ready. And we'll make sure to post this information under, under the video and... Keep it updated on our KLEK Facebook. Page. And by the way, we are not for profit. So yeah. what your donations are tax deductible. All right, so that gives you an even more of an incentive to right. make a donation. Right. Um, we know that this community survives off of the support of nonprofit, the services that nonprofits offer. So we thank you so much for God developing you. this program and you. trying to give back to the community. We were talking the first half about the skills that the children take away, mm-hmm. or not just the children, the individuals that participate, mm-hmm. the skills they take away from mm-hmm. the program. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, right now it's mainly kids coming through the summer. I mean, yes, mainly yes. kids. And so before we went to break, we were talking about um, some testing you did, and you said mm-hmm. that some of the younger ones did better mm-hmm. than some of the older ones. Do you think that the older ones are overconfident that I do I, this? I don't think that's what it is. I think what it is, is the outside holds more interest. Okay. Because when the parents are not home, they go outside to play with your friends. Okay. They don't, they're not so much electronically inclined than the younger ones. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of parents, and I see this, the electronics is their babysitter, even when they're home. Mm-hmm. So the kid could stay out of their fa- face, they hand every tablet or phone, and the kid goes to play. Wow. Mm-hmm. And they're more savvy with the electronic games than the older kids who's outside with his friends. Okay. So when you test them on the same platform, the younger kids do better than the older kids. Okay. Because the older kids are not so much attached to this. Okay. They will play video games now. Yes. Not so much on the computer. Okay. They'll play video games. Just the controller. Just the controller, <laughs> and they, they, they're experts at that. But when it comes to computer savvy, not really. Okay. Not really. They can get some things done. And it shows, by the way, when you test them, it's the same test. Okay. For the four year old as well as the 16 or 13 year same old. Same test. Yeah. You bring it back together, and this one scores 90, and this one is 40. Okay. What happened? Mm-hmm. That means somebody's not paying attention. Somebody's either. not paying attention. Mm-hmm. So, when, what we're doing with the kids, since they are so computer savvy, we teach them the right ways to type, the right ways to handle a document, okay. the right ways to process information. Okay. That's what we teach them, even at four years old. So do you um, kind of do a 
Do you monitor the children? Like some people type, they do the what they call the hand pecking. Mm -hmm. That's what I still do. <laughs> I just do it a little faster than him. Oh goodness. <laughs> okay. Or do you see that the kids, from the time they come in to the time they leave, mm -hmm. versus using the two finger, you know, one mm -hmm. or two fingers, they're mm -hmm. now able to use their whole hand? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the kids, his he was eight then. Okay. When they started with the keyboarding. There were there was a lot of frustrations you could hear in their voice. Okay. Four weeks into the program, this kid calls me and says, "Doctor, look!" And he's looking away, and he's <laughs> happy, and he's so accurate. Wow. He, he was so proud of himself. When they went back to school, they were way ahead of their classmates in okay. keyboard. That is wonderful. Yeah. I'm still at the point I have to look. There's some keys I know, mm -hmm. but I still have to look at. I cannot look away from the keyboard and type. I, I can't either. Yeah. I can't either. Right. So it, what we're trying to do is get the next generation to be so computer savvy that they not. I, I get hung up on looking for the keys. Okay. For the keys, uh, you lose the essence of thinking about the document and what you want to produce. You're more focused on finding the right keys for the okay, few words like... you know to type yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. but if you if you if you are if you are fluent in typing your brain could flow through your fingers because okay. you're not worried about looking you just type as you're thinking you can just mm -hmm. so that's, that's what we're trying to get the kids to. And I think overall, to. even those that are planning on going to college at some point mm -hmm. in their life it will help them like you said They'll be less focused on finding the keys. Mm -hmm. They can put more thought into what they're actually typing yes, and possibly get a better grade on mm -hmm. that paper or right. whatever that you know homework assignment right. is. Right. And then with a lot of jobs, now there's some data entry mm -hmm. required. Mm -hmm. So having those strong computer skills is Perhaps. very uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. On most applications, they'll ask you, which of these programs do you have experience with? Mm -hmm. And I sometimes wonder if someone doesn't check anything does that hinder them from getting a job or does it put them on the lower end of you know put the application on the lower on the bottom of the pile mm -hmm. versus someone who has ex, uh, experience with you know Microsoft this or mm -hmm. Mac or what other whatever other operating systems are out there actually there was a there was a guy just last this last uh, session with a 12 week class he wanted to start his own business okay. as a trainer. A physical trainer? Yes. Okay. They needed him to have computer skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he came in. The unfair thing is he learned what he needed to learn. He didn't complete the, the, the whole course. Oh, he just learned what he needed to learn and, and took off. Oh, no. Yeah. So, but the important thing is he came and got the skills he needed okay. to get another job oh. to improve his life. That's all we need to know. Okay. That's all we care about. All right. So, we, also, you're never too old to learn. No. And so, this guy was 42. Okay. There was another guy. He's a preacher out there somewhere, oh. not in Jonesboro, okay. but outside of Jonesboro. He's, he's 57. Okay. He came and learned some skills. That's wonderful. Right. He's a preacher. So maybe now he can type up his sermons or whatever. Other That's exactly what he was looking okay. for. Okay. <laughs> Instead of having somebody you know, else to type it up for. Uh -huh. and, and then you find mistakes while you're reading it and all that stuff. So, so whenever they come to the center, mm -hmm. um, is everyone tested before they begin the course? And yes. do And how often are they tested? Well, when we get you in, we test you and the onset. And two weeks after we instruct you, we test you to see what you know. Mm -hmm. okay. and see if you're on track, because if you're not on track, we need to change the way we're teaching you. Okay. Yeah. So do you have um, children, like I know how the lab is set up pretty much. Mm -hmm. The computers are around the wall. Right. That's, in the middle. that's to let us stand in the middle of the room and have sight of okay. all the computers. Because all the monitors are facing the center of the room. So they can't get into anything they're not supposed to. I can see it. Okay. All right. And so for the independent learners, you know, mm -hmm. you let them go and kind of do whatever program you assign them on the computer. Now for those that need a little more help, do you have them maybe sit at the tables and, mm -hmm. and then you do some more? We have three tables set in the middle of the floor. Okay. And we could bring the laptops out, especially during the day if the adults come. Okay. We'll put them on the laptop, we don't put them on the desktop. Okay. So we can instruct them one on one. 
Meanwhile, while you're in the middle of the room, you can see what every other kid is doing. Okay. Okay. The kids don't need, the adults don't need same supervision. Okay. You work with them one on one. One of the things we do for the adults, now this is uh, somebody out there needs this. Some other people are scared of a mouse. Uh, why? Okay. Here's a simple explanation. This is my hand. Okay. I could do a lot of things with my hand. Okay. But I have to know what I'm doing to use a finger to pick on something. Okay. If it's a whole hand, I could move there. Okay. But if you tell me to touch the corner of that and I'm a little old and my finger's shaking, I'm not so sure. Okay. So what we do with the adults who are not conversant with the mouse, we let them use paint. Paint? Paint is in every computer that has Microsoft in it. Oh, you mean the... Um, the... the paint. Okay. Paint application? It's a Paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's in the it's in, it's in every computer. I think it's the one that's represented with the little mm -hmm. the paintbrush. Okay. The paintbrush. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now here's the reason for the paint. The paint it gives you a canvas, which is like a sheet of paper. It gives you different size brushes. It gives you different color palettes. Mm -hmm. The way to train someone on the mouse is have them use the mouse and write the letter A, hmm. B, all the way to Z. With it gives them dexterity on how to use the mouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you can put them on a regular program and it will be easier for them. Again, if you get hung up on trying to manage the mouse, you're not paying attention to what you do. You're just trying to conquer this little mouse. Because mm -hmm. every time I want to click here, I click over there. So to get them conversant with using the mouse, we put them on paint. And they do it several times until they're so well versed in using the mouse then you can put them on word or anything else. They, they, it's no problem. Wow. And that's why you do what you do. That's why you're the professional, mm -hmm. the expert in this. Because mm -hmm. I would have never thought to use that program or any other type of program. Yeah. Where they can just freely kind of draw or, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know. It, it, it does help because you, you have to engage the mouse. You, you have to engage the type of paint you want. Mm -hmm. You have to engage the color mm -hmm. okay. to be able to write the letter. The letter A is easy. With the, okay. <laughs> Letter A is easy. C is easy. But how to get there? So okay. when I make you practice this, and then I make you do it over and over, and then I make you change colors for every letter. Okay. By the time you get done with the paint, you're a master at mouse. Okay. So now you can concentrate on learning Word or Excel. See, for Excel, go back to Excel, there's, there's, a, there's a cell. I can't be careless on where I click in Excel. Okay. I'll have the wrong result. Yeah. So I have to make sure I point at the right cell mm -hmm. for the results I want. So if you don't have mouse dexterity, you're not going to get it. Okay. You're always going to struggle. Now, do you find that some people still prefer the keypad on a laptop versus... I don't know anybody who prefers the keypad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know. Not one. Not even me. <laughs> oh, really? No. <laughs> I always have a cordless mouse. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always have a mouse. Mouse is a lot faster. It the, is. the touchpad is for your convenience. When you are in a plane or in a cramped space, you don't have a place for a mouse. That's what that's for. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Well, you mm. just taught us something else today. I, know. I thought that's why you invited me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So, what are some of the other programs um, the kids now are learning? I know during the fall, I know you said you're changing it up. Mm -hmm. You changed it up for the summer. Mm -hmm. They did basic word, keyboarding, Excel, mm -hmm. PowerPoint. Let's mm -hmm. talk about how, what what about PowerPoint or what specific about PowerPoint do you teach the kids? Right. Okay. Most people, when you're in the word program, it's a word processor. Okay. It is designed for words only. Okay. Mm -hmm. It will give you a little room to put a picture, but you have to know how to handle the picture yes. in the Word document. PowerPoint, on the other hand, is designed for pictures okay. with a little room for text. Okay. But the PowerPoint is a lot easier if you're putting pictures. The text is easier to manipulate in PowerPoint than picture is in Word. It is, um, because okay. with PowerPoint they have these text boxes that you can manipulate size yep. and shape and mm -hmm. placement. Mm -hmm. um, in Word, manipulating pictures is not so easy. 
No, because then you have to decide do I want the picture through side, you know. And you have to know what to do to do that. Otherwise, yes. you put a picture in and your words are well, all, all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to learn how to resize mm -hmm. and move the picture. Mm -hmm. But yes, okay. there's a so, lot to learn within each program. So PowerPoint, in a, in a, in a nutshell, PowerPoint is a program where I open up a page and I want to talk to you about a concept that I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to use my mouth. Mm -hmm. I want to use pictures and words. So I can create a 16 page presentation. And I put the pictures in each slide that I want to tell my story without opening my mouth. Okay. I put the text where I need them to be. And then I could time my presentation and send it to you. So when you open it, it goes from one slide to the next to the next. By the time you get to the end, you have the story. And I haven't said a word. Okay. That's what PowerPoint is. I had to do a PowerPoint for a class and mm -hmm. we had to, it took me a while to figure out how to get my voice over mm -hmm. um, on the PowerPoint. Yes, because mm -hmm. we had to have either music, our voice, we had to have mm -hmm. some type of audio attached right. to the it took me a while, but mm -hmm. I figured it out, and, Good. and it actually came out pretty nice. So. Good. Good. You could do a voiceover on the PowerPoint itself, or the PowerPoint could be independent while you speak, so you control the transition of the PowerPoint. Okay. Now, here's another thing, beautiful thing about PowerPoint. How I transition from one slide to, all, to the other is infinite. Yeah. I could have it dissolve, <laughs> I could have it disappear to the... I could do all kinds of stuff. So, PowerPoint... It's really exciting okay. if you learn PowerPoint, okay? And it's easy to learn. But the other the other parts are the levels that go with it. But the basic PowerPoint, you can teach just like Excel. You can teach someone just like that. Wow. And you can put... One of the things that is beautiful about PowerPoint, on one slide, I could put as many pictures as I want. Okay. The only problem is they're going to be tiny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's gonna be tiny. <laughs> so that's PowerPoint in a nutshell. Okay. So are they tested on uh, the different, the different, I guess, Excel, Word, and then mm -hmm. PowerPoints separately? Mm -hmm. and, we do. We okay. test them. So they have to put presentations on for you in yep. order to. They do. That's awesome. Now, so if you say, okay, here's how we teach Word, okay? For a little kid, tap your first name and your last name, mm -hmm. push enter. What happens? Oh, I'm on the next line. So type your, the name of your school. They mm -hmm. type it. Uh, type how old you are. You we'll make them create about six or seven lines. Okay. Then you make them go back and bold your name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back and bold the second line, make it green. Oh. Go to the fourth line, change the font. Mm. The fifth line, change the font size. Oh, wow. So by the time they do all of that, They've learned how to cut and paste and change and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And you tell them to exit out of that. Now, okay. do exactly what I told you to do the last time and let me see. Yeah. So they start with a blank sheet. And when you come back, whatever you taught them is right there on paper. Mm -hmm. What did you learn? Well, I, I didn't know this was here. Well, I didn't know how to do this. Now yeah. I do. Okay. Just by practicing. The same thing with PowerPoint. Now, you can import pictures. Now, here's what we do with PowerPoint. PowerPoint, there are pictures on the computer, local, to the computer they're using. Mm -hmm. When you have internet, there are pictures on the internet. Mm -hmm. So we show them how to enter what you want from the internet as a picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it will take you to the internet and show you choices. And how you can import it and put it in your presentation. So that you go to online pictures, type in what you want, and then... Mm -hmm. Select and okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Let's say I'm doing a PowerPoint. I say insert. insert. There's pictures. There's pictures online. That's right. So I pick the pictures online. And then it, it search box comes out. Either Bing or any of these search yes. engines. And I say I want the Bible. Okay. And you'll search and you'll bring me pictures of Bibles. Mm -hmm. And I pick one. I say insert. They all disappear. Here's the Bible. Mm -hmm. So the Bible could have been said that this big, and I have to shrink it and put it where I want it. Okay. Only in, in PowerPoint do you handle pictures that way. You put it where you want it and it stays. Okay. In Word, it won't stay. No. <laughs> <laughs> it will display something else. 
okay? Uh, publisher, we don't teach publisher. I was going to ask you about publisher. We don't teach publisher, but if anybody is interested, we can teach publisher too. Publisher, publisher is actually a merge between all three programs. It is. Excel, Word, and PowerPoint into publisher. I love publisher. I had to use it a lot when I worked in an office. Um, mm -hmm. We had to create a lot of our own brochures mm -hmm. and flyers. Mm -hmm. And for me, publisher was easy because things were fixed. You could mm -hmm. pick a template mm -hmm. and just kind of plug Populate it. You just put what you want here and there. Yes, and you can adjust there. the color. Right. And I love publisher personally, right. but... Nobody's ever asked us to teach publisher. Really? All our brochures we do, I do them on publisher. Nobody's ever been asked. Nobody's ever asked to learn it. I think if people got more exposed to publisher, they would love it because you do brooch, um, business cards, postcards. Mm -hmm. It's formatted, formatted for you. Mm -hmm. This is my first time ever hearing about this, so really? I'm definitely going to play with it. Yeah, oh you need goodness. to play with it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to play with it. All right, so we're going to get ready to take another quick break. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Infomercials can be irresistible. To help avoid problems when purchasing products advertised through infomercials, the Better Business Bureau recommends that you take these steps. Read and understand the fine print. Make sure you know purchase and return policies, restocking fees, and exchange options. Review the seller's privacy policy. Learn if your name and other information will be sold or used to solicit for other offers. Obtain a specific delivery time. Be suspicious if the business cannot supply this information. Pay by credit card and keep those receipts. Check your billing and financial statement regularly for only authorized transactions. For more information about purchasing products and registering complaints, visit BBB.org. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumnidst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Hello, this is your girl, Allie J, and I want everyone to join me for Kick It With a Cancer, my birthday bash going down June 23rd at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse, 1025 West Johnson Avenue, across from Riceland Foods in Jonesboro. This party is going to be an all-ages affair from 7 to 10 o'clock p.m., and I'm letting all cancers in free until 8.30 p.m. with ID. Music by DJ Mr. Chu. To celebrate my birthday, I'm going to make it easy on your pockets, too. Just $5 to get in for adults, $3 if you're 13 and 17, and kids 12 and under get in free. I told you it's an all-ages family affair, and you know you want to be there, right? And just because it's my birthday, I'm giving away presents to some lucky guests. So come kick it with a cancer June 23rd at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse, 1025 West Johnson Avenue from 7 to 10 p.m. This is a KLEK fundraiser. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1st, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Boatless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOLAlphas on Facebook or via email at MOLAlphas at gmail.com. 
Arkansas Early Learning offers childcare activities and educational programs to children ages 0 to 5. That gives them a head start in life. Arkansas Early Learning is in the community at no cost. Applications at arearlylearning.org. That's arearlylearning.org. Or on Facebook at Arkansas Early Learning. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. Hey, what's up, Jones World? This is Hezekiah Walker. I'm so blessed to be on the radio here at KLEK 102.5 FM. Join me for the Hezekiah Walker Show every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. Right after Community Conversations and every Wednesday night right after your local church Bible study at 8 o'clock p.m. Jones World, join me, Hezekiah Walker, and give every praise to our God on KLEK 102.5 FM. Hezekiah Walker. It's the Hezekiah Walker Show. Did you know KLEK has a brand new streaming app? That's right. You can listen to KLEK 102.5 FM anywhere in the world. The app is available for all Android phones and tablets, as well as iPhones and iPads. Just search your app store for KLEK and download the KLEK app for free today. And don't miss a beat of the education, entertainment, and empowerment on KLEK 102.5 FM. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. <laughs> good morning. I was about to say good morning. Okay, welcome back to Community Conversations. How are you all confused now, right? <laughs> Community <laughs> Conversations is always a good time when Reverend Osa stops by the studio. He keeps us on our toes. We're discussing um, his computer classes at the... Uh, Marshall Street Center, which is 601 mm -hmm. Marshall Street. Right. I'm going to get it all together before this day is over. He's going to beat into my brain. Mm -hmm. And this is the New Life Empowerment Development Center. Oh, she got it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the center is open from 9 to 1 p.m. Monday mm -hmm. through Friday. Children of all ages are welcomed. Yep. Um, they can teach young and old they can teach them at any level that they are mm -hmm. um beginning to we have books there too you know and books yeah. okay we have books and puzzles okay so For the ones that don't necessarily want to be on the computer okay so they can color they can read they could do activities okay so for the children who not, don't necessarily want to learn computer skills mm -hmm. but just want to have something to do for the mm -hmm. summer Go down to the computer lab. Yep, is that condition? We don't charge you for the coolness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we teach, we, we steer the kids about etiquette. Okay. You can't come in there not dressed properly. Okay. You can't come in there without brushing your teeth. We have toothbrushes, we have toothpaste, we have lip gloss. We have a shower in there. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. lip we don't let a lot of people take showers because we don't have towels. Okay. Okay. But we'll send them home to take a shower. If it's brushing their teeth, we'll give them a brush and a toothpaste. They That's can wonderful. Brush their teeth right there. What we're trying to instill in the kids is better values for themselves. That's right. It, it doesn't. A lot of the kids that come into our lab, especially during the summer, their parents are working. Okay. During the school, it didn't matter because they were in school. The mm -hmm. parents were at work. Now it's summertime. If they're not in any program, the kid is left home alone. Mm -hmm. So he comes to the lab. And uh, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep an eye on them until 1 o'clock when we leave. Mm -hmm. So we'll make sure they're fed, make sure they are clothed properly. If they didn't brush their teeth and they can't go home, we'll, let them, we'll give them a toothbrush that's wrapped. We'll give them toothpaste, they go brush their teeth. Wash their face, we'll have paper towels there. So we'll try to make it a one-stop center okay. for kids uh, because it's a low-income neighborhood. Okay. Uh, anyone could walk through your door. Might have shoes with holes in them. If we have shoes their size, we'll put it on their feet. Uh, sending them home doesn't do much because mm -hmm. nobody's home. Mm -hmm. We do get kids come in the lab sometimes. We open at 9. Okay. I said it before. Sometimes when I get there early, 8.30, so kids are hanging at the door. Wow. Parents are going to work. There's nothing to eat at home. So they want to come stay at the lab. Okay. So we usually like to have something to give them. You know, I think the kids are, are they are taking, they may not ever tell you, but they're taking away more than just computer skills. They're taking away the fellowship, the relationship they're building with you mm -hmm. and the other volunteers at the center. Mm -hmm. 
they're taking away life skills. Yeah. Um, and it may not click to them, especially like the five, six, seven year olds. Mm-hmm. It may not click to them now, mm-hmm. but as they become teenagers and adults, they'll be like, they will be like, I'm so happy I ran across, mm-hmm. you know, Reverend Oates. I'm so happy well, that, that, you know, they poured into my life. They took time out because you could be possibly doing something else <laughs> and you could have a different disposition or you could, there are some people that are not cut out to be teachers mm-hmm. of any kind, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I would say God chose you for this. I, I also hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Just to piggyback off that, if you, sometimes when you see someone doing wrong or you mm-hmm. see or you even meet a criminal mm-hmm. and you ask them, what, what made you make that decision? What caused that decision? Well, someone was mean to me and I've been through so much pain mm-hmm. that I've just passed it on. But whenever you're nice to someone, you mm-hmm. give to them, you, Amen. I guess, instill in them mm-hmm. what has been instilled in you. Amen. And it's like a continued cycle. Amen. You know, also the other part of the equation I was a minister before I started the lab, okay. so this is attached to ministry. Mm-hmm. Okay. We teach the kids once a week Bible study, okay. just for the kids that come to the lab. And a lot of them don't go to church. So they learn at the Bible study also. Okay, so and then we feed them, that makes them come. You're feeding their mind, their body, and their soul. I'm trying to do it all. <laughs> By the help of God, though. <laughs> like Micah said, a one-stop shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, one. trying, we're trying to mold, change the complexion of the neighborhood we're in. Yes. By complexion, I'm not talking about this color. I'm yes. talking about the way they think and the way they process information. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nobody is your enemy That's but right. yourself. Mm-hmm. And the way to capture any person is to capture their mind. If you let them know that their mind is free to think and roam as much as they want, there is no impossibilities in your thinking. Mm -hmm. So these kids, they are hearing every day, what you gonna become? Well, I don't know yet, well, make up your mind. What do you like to do? (laughs) Well, I like to be an engineer, then go for engineering. I like to fly a plane. They go learn how to fly a plane. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, we, we are trying to put these things in their head. So a lot of them, you ask them, I don't know. Well, you, start, you need to start thinking about it. What would you like to do? But well, one whispered to me, I like to help people. <laughs> so then you go to school. Actually, that was yesterday. I was at McDonald's. Okay. <laughs> the McDonald on Johnson Street, uh, no, no, on Stadium, gives us food for the kids once a week. So I went to pick it up. I saw sometimes in the high school. Okay. So the kid came out and said, I know you. He said, from where? She said, the high school. You sung for me. I said, what class? She says, chemistry. She said, come here. What are you going to be when you grow up? She walked up to me. She said, I want to help people. All right. I want to be a counselor. Mm-hmm. I said, why are you whispering it? <laughs> be proud of that. She's trying yeah. to keep but, her But what I'm true. saying is, before then, she didn't know. But I kept badgering them mm-hmm. so they could put it in their head. That, okay, what do I want? Because I'm going to grow up someday. What do you want to be? Mm-hmm. Start thinking about that and start driving towards that. All righty. Well, with that, we're going to end the show, and I want to leave you all with a quick quote. We have to talk about liberating minds as well as liberating society. Mm-hmm. This is from Angela Davis, a very well-known activist from the 70s. Bless God for that. All right, so this has been your Thursday edition of Community Conversations. Thank you all, and have a very blessed day. Thanks for having me. All right. All right, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make